Good morning and welcome to the final day. That's right, Billy. This is the day everyone waits for and we couldn't ask for more sunshine, but I think the players might be asking for a little less wind. Oh, I concur. Well, the performance edition will be wrapping up this afternoon and we still have no idea John Key could take this title home. Well, you know, Bill Sharon is sitting in the lead right now, a comfortable, semi-comfortable lead, but again, in the performance edition, uh, the whole format has changed, so really it's still First, second card, first, second, or third card. Anybody can jump up and get right back on top. David Feldberg, the highest rated player here, he's still within reach of that win, and he really wants it bad. It's going to be a great day. We're going to give you some live action. We're going to let you see the place. But first, we're going to go over and get some PDGA player talk in. All right, I've been able to track down over here in the player hospitality area. We've got Bradley Tucker. Where are you from, Bradley? Charlotte, North Carolina. Not too far away. No, right up the street. And Paul Han Charuk. Out of? Port St. Lucie, Florida. Out of Florida. All right. Well, you are both making a drive. You, only 20 minutes. You, how long did it take you to get here? Six, seven hours, something like that. All right. And how long have you been in town? Uh, since Monday. Awesome. So you've gotten plenty of practice in on the course? Yeah, I played one round through about 72 holes. So it was, it was fun. But, uh, yeah, I think I saw enough today. Yeah, I've seen enough, uh, what, red flags? Yeah, I want to go home. Oh, wants to go home. Well, we are, you're really close. Are you going to stick around for the clinic later tonight? Yeah, probably. I need well, to learn something. I definitely could use a few pointers. <laughs> well, you're not the only one that's struggling out there. I know a lot of other people are bringing back huge numbers from different holes. How about you, Bradley? How are you feeling about your game today? Well, uh, I think uh, there's always room for improvement, but uh, I'm having the time of my life, and I'm glad that I'm here, and uh, I'm glad that Jonathan Poole and everybody put on a great tournament, and uh, it's the time of my life, actually. Yeah. I do have to agree with that. Yeah. It is, well, I don't know. I, the words cannot describe how well they do this, and how well it's put together, all the effort that goes into this. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yep. Well, I'm glad you guys are having a great time. Now, is there any advice that you can give to anybody that watches this at home who wants to uh, participate the next time this event comes around? Practice a lot. Yeah. Your putts, uh, you're definitely going to need some good putting game and approach shots and uh, keeping it in the middle of the fairway. This is the name of the game out here. I mean, you're not going to be able to get these crazy shots that just go out of nowhere and then come back into the into the fairway that's not going to happen here it's straight down the middle all the time right you know that's what we see a lot a lot of people uh, discing down to mid ranges fairway drivers and everything like that so smart golf is good golf and green is good yes well those are the words from the men that have went through the course today we'll hopefully see you guys uh, crawl back up to the leaderboard tomorrow absolutely well hello and good afternoon this is the pdga player talk i'm standing with Robbie Olson and Ben Calloway. So did you guys get a chance to play together out there? Is that what happened? Or are you coming from different cards? Different cards. Different cards. How, how's it going? You guys having fun? Oh, lots of fun. Yeah, having a blast. You know, the course is beautiful. You, know, you can't really have a bad time here. Right, exactly. Are you having any trouble with any OB here? Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Um, that's, my, that's my biggest issue. But, um, you know, just got to learn from your mistakes and come back tomorrow hard and hard and strong, you know? Well, oh, absolutely. Now, where are you coming out of, Ben? Uh, Davenport, Iowa. Davenport, Iowa. So you made somewhat of a drive to get here? Yeah, about 12 hours. Staying all week. How many times did you get to practice the course before you decided to play? Uh, about three or four times. Awesome. Well, very cool. What's your favorite hole out here? Uh, my favorite hole would probably be uh, five. I love that hole. Yeah, what do you love so much about it? Just, it's just it's such a challenging hole, you know, and it, uh, it's, it's a legitimate par five. I, just, I love holes like that that are uh, considered par fives and par fours. You know, not everything's just a simple little par three. Oh, absolutely. So this it gives place. Me that much of a challenge. It brings out the best in everyone yeah, and absolutely. probably the worst. Robbie, how about you? Do you have a favorite hole here? Um, I'd probably have to say hole eight. Hole eight, and why? Like why do you choose hole eight? Just because sort of the OB on both sides gives you a, you know, sort of a invisible fairway. Sure. Have you ever? Fairway. How many times have you played USDGC? My first year. First year, so you yeah. do know that last year it was a lot tighter. Yeah, with that tree there. I mm -hmm. see that. Oh, yeah, and a host of the other trees are down too. Well, we have just had our PDGA player talk with Robbie Olson and Ben Calloway. Good luck the rest of the week, fellas. Thank Thanks, you. Liz. Well, hello. We've been able to catch up with tour manager Andrew Sweeten, big dog. In other words, how you doing in here, man? I'm doing all right, Liz. How are you? Good. Oh, yeah, it's a great week. All I mean, right. everybody's having a great time. And it's gorgeous weather here in Rock Hill. Oh, I. It's South Carolina, right? Absolutely. <laughs> now you look. You are in, sitting in front of a computer screen right now. You've got printers, other gadgets in here. What are you? What What, what are you doing well, here? Well, basically, my job is pretty simple this week for the PJ piece of it. I'm checking scorecards, making sure they're right. Um, 
the process we're using is each competitor keeps track of each other competitors in their group score and in theory they check the cards turn them in and you'd think with all four cards matching that would mean that everybody was fine but we actually did have to stroke somebody today because their score was wrong on all four cards oh wow it's unfortunate but that's the way it goes and well that's what so you're I'm here for that, right um, then i'm entering the scores just the raw scores and then i ship them over to adrian from innova who's doing the work to the calculations for the handicapping Okay, and hopefully we'll be able to see this online as yep, well. Actually, they're online right now. They're actually picking up scores on hole 12 as people come through, and they're showing them online. Oh, very good. Well, we know that we all are uh, jumping at the bit to see who's going to yeah. be in the lead today in the final round. Uh, well, we want to let you get back to work. Yeah, um, well, any shout-outs you want to give? Because I see you've been in this box all day. Shout-outs to everybody. This morning was great. I spent some time when uh, the kids came in for the EDGE program. Because, you know, I don't have to worry about a card until someone, the first group gets through 18. So right. in the morning I have a little bit of free time to check out the course and see people. And so that was a lot of fun. So. Well, the way the rounds are going, it sounds like you're going to have a lot of free time in the morning. They are long rounds. They are grueling. Yep. So. And they're going to get probably a little longer depending because, you know, when the groupings happen tomorrow, people that have had the higher scores will be in groups together. So those groups are going to take a longer time to play, I think. So well, we'll see. There might be some very long rounds tomorrow. You bet. It's a great well, course. It's certainly making them appreciate what they've seen the pros do out here years past. They understand that, you know, somebody shooting that score here, wow, that really is impressive. Uh, so, truly. Yeah, we've had some pretty good scores today, too. Some people that have, you know, hole 17 is the one where everyone gets all ooh and scared. And I've seen some, you know, 800-some ranked players shooting threes and fours on it, and I'm very happy having done so. So. Well, I, we appreciate the information, here. definitely. And uh, I think we're going to have to get out of this box as it's getting pretty hot. We're going to leave yeah. you to it. Okay. And thank you so much for right. your time, big thank dog. You. Have fun, Liz. All right. We've caught up with Barry Schultz, multiple-time champion here at the USDGC. Hi, How you doing, Barry? I'm doing pretty good today. How, yeah. How's it playing out there for you? It's looking nice. We have the wind has died down compared to the last couple of days, and it's warmed up a little compared to the last couple of days. So it's looking really nice out here. Guys are really having a good time. Oh, well, yeah. Ready. I just checked the Wisconsin weather, and that looks pretty cold. So <laughs> can you tell us how you like it down here? Are you going to stay down I, here? I do. I do like it down here. It's been quite warm. Uh, for my standards, the guys down here are enjoying because it it's not been 100 degrees, but you know, 80, 85 with humidity is my summer back in Wisconsin, so it's been warm. But that's one of the main reasons why I moved down here, so I could get used to that warmth and play some wintertime golf. And this is the time of year that the weather turns in Wisconsin and it turns good here, so I'm looking really forward to this next couple months. Well, absolutely, and I hear you live really close to this course. What's that like having this in your backyard? It's really nice. Um, I have less than a mile or so from parking lot to parking lot here and uh, I've been playing the lake course a lot quick and easy three or four discs get it done in an hour and just being on the property on a normal basis is really good for the soul. Well absolutely is there anything else you do to stay busy down here now that you have an abundance of warm weather? Um, I've been trying to be a little more active and of course it's football season so I've got fantasy teams to look at. And after how many and fantasy just, teams do you have this year? Uh, too many to count. It's probably 50 to 100. I, I'm on almost every <laughs> website and every website has you can have 5 or you can have 10 or you can have 20 so I have almost the maximum of them. I just love football and really just getting into every team and what they're doing, roster moves and all that stuff. I just love football on Sundays. And I'm having a hard time deciding to go play some events instead of staying home <laughs> and watching football. But, uh, you know. Well, the things Barry Schultz has to deal with. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> We're so happy we got a chance to talk to you. We appreciate it. Right, thanks, and uh, good luck this week. Thanks. We'll need some. Well, I know that that is one of my favorite parts about this whole event is really getting to know each and every player. Well, they're unique humans, and they're all here, it seems like. I don't know. I think it's time that we go out and check some live action. Lead card, last day. Here's some live action for you from the final round of the USDGC. Oh boy, we are on. Oh, oh my gosh, he hit. Now that's a billy tree if I've ever seen a billy tree. That was not what he was looking for. That's John Key. Oh, and he just took over the lead all on his own. What a way to start. He is, I'm sure, upset about that. Actually, you know, I believe that is. Uh, Bill Sharon. Well, according to the scorecard, should be John Key on the tee. I'm pretty sure that's John. We'll check when we get over. This is hole number nine. This is a 575 footer. It is danger everywhere. You bet. And you know, on this hole, it's a it's very much a placement shot right off the tee. They're only trying to get about 250 feet, and that's just up on that platform you see. And it's just to line themselves up for a next next shot. Well, that's what he wanted, but that first shot, about 10 feet out of his hand, hit that tree, ricocheted back by the tee pad. So he's wow, going to lay three Wow, what a complicated hole. Dana Vici on the pad now. 
Dana again. He is falling. He's no longer in the chase for the lead. But again, I mean, it is Winthrop. Anything can happen. But well, he's... actually, uh, off the second card, Kevin Tritton now has moved into third place as he sits at three under. Oh boy, he's having a great time out here. He just said he is having the time of his life. Patrick May, sitting at two under, is in fourth place currently, and. Dana Vici with a good shot here. That's going to be oh, a nice solid one, shot. Oh. oh, Liz, it went from going to be perfect, and the limbs caught it, and he is now OB having to re -tee. What a horrible break for Dana. You bet. That shot looked so clean, Billy, and it just caught a couple of branches, and it knocked itself OB. And again, I, that rope is real close to that tree this year. Yeah, they have really tightened the rope up. Yeah, we were just talking to Kevin Tritton, said he had to fight back losing his breakfast on the first tee. He was so nervous, got through it, and now he's just having the day of his life, Liz. You're right, he's sitting third by himself right now. Uh, now this shot looks much more controlled, maybe not at the exact place, but wow. A uh, great shot by Dana. He is disgusted and disappointed. Yeah, I'm just trying to hold his composure now. Patrick May making his way to the tee. That's right, Patrick sits at uh, two down for the tournament through eight holes of the final round, and what a young athlete this is. Well, I believe that might have been Bill Sharon. We could have missed John's drive, as there's so much going on out here. That's right, they're off. Let's check out how they well, handle these tricky approaches, and let's figure out where John Key is exactly. Well, it looks like Patrick May is going to be away. Uh, you know, I don't think he's away. I think he's just walking up there and checking out the situation, because I definitely think that someone is out before that, even Dana, maybe. Well, we didn't get an opportunity to see. Uh, All right, sure enough, he is away. John Key drive. It looks like Patrick's laying. Uh oh, on that. Oh my gosh, I don't think he meant to quite lay it up to there. Although he did walk right up to there and test that spot out, but. Well, that was like a 22 foot putt, yeah. right into the ground. I mean, uh... yeah. All right, now we've got Bill Sharon coming up. We'll, we'll, uh, or it's actually. Yeah, yeah Bill yeah, Sharon is Sharon walking up to up. his disc. Um, what? Well, what's transpired so far uh, is back and forth. Uh, Bill came out with a four-stroke lead over John Key, and right now, coming into this hole, John Key has taken a lead by one stroke over Bill Sharon at 11 under versus 10 under. Next closest would be Kevin Tritton at three under. You're right. Now it looks like, I mean, all three, every player out there just knows how touchy of a shot this is, and wow, look at them all deciding to maybe play safe. Well... This is Bill Sharon again. Uh, he and he and on is, one out on two, up on three, and he looks like he's going to be laying up here. It looks like he does not know exactly what he's going to do. I'm kind of excited to see what happens. He's well, got a quite a lie to deal with. There's a slope there, and I mean that's all of 350 feet to the bucket. Billy. Oh, every bit of it, and and looks like he was going to lay up, and now, you know, he's going to lay up here. I, there's no way he's throwing a shot with this standstill motion. That no, far. no, not at all. All right, still a tricky layup, not getting too much ground, but still a little bit flatter of a run up for his next shot. All right, here's John Key. He's sprinting up to uh, where he might want to take a look at a landing zone. Well, right now, he's in control of his own fate. He's got the lead of the USDGC. This is the ninth hole, so we're fixing to be done with the front nine. He has made up five stroke difference here as he's gained the five strokes, and Bill Sharon has remained par. So he's really playing some good golf today. And we're going to see exactly what these two guys are made of because it looks like it's going to be a two-man battle till the end, Liz. That's right. It looks like John Key has staked out his uh, landing position right on the other side of that black fence. However, Liz, he's, now he's going Liz, to be teeing off from directly underneath it. That he didn't is come down, Liz. He's stuck in. Lie. He is stuck in the, the in the metal fixture. He's not going to be able to do anything but take another short little putt. What an unfortunate yeah, you know, break, and what a bad shot. I tell you, for the smart choices that these guys made in laying up, they sure did it poorly. Well, Dana Vici now, and Dana had a beautiful drive that just didn't work out. He lays three here, and I can tell you now, Dana's going to try to rip this thing up on the green. Well, Dana has got the talent to do it, and he's got the distance, and he's got the mentality to do it, too. Well, the wind is picking up, as you can see. It's a right to left wind from his perspective, which is tough for the hazard. You gotta keep it flat a long time. As soon as it starts banking left, that wind is gonna really take over. That's right, it's also critical to take into account his lie right now. He has to keep his body uh, perpendicular to the throwing surface. I like it, Liz, yeah, I think it looks he's like got it's enough. Got the distance. 
perfect shot, Liz. That is a golf shot by Dana Vici. Well, the biggest problem he's got now is that elevated basket. He's got about a 20 footer, but he's got some pressure. Now, after laying up here, and Patrick May, we've been noticing, he's been going through here just playing a controlled golf game, just trying to get his projected par. Right, you know, this is gonna be a really tricky shot. If he expects to get it here, he's gotta put this shot right next to the bucket. Well, he's got plenty to get over. As a matter of fact, he needs to get down, Liz. He could go out the backside, and that's exactly what he's done. He's, that was his third shot, so he's in on three, he's out on four, he's got the exact same shot. Great, just imagine if he'd have thrown that shot earlier, he'd have been in. Well, could have been his lie, could have been just maybe out of his comfort zone, but he really put a smooth move on it there. All right, next up, uh, you know, I... It's Patrick again. That's right, I forgot to throw in distance here. five here. That's right, when you throw OB, you throw from right where you threw at. This I like time it looks one. a lot lower. Oh yeah, that's gonna nestle up right, just maybe on the outside of this circle. Well, he's laying five there, disappointed with his effort, but they're over now to John Key as the spotter's moving in. John Key's moving in. And I'm telling you, he did not come down. He is stuck. You can see he's looking up. He's going to mark right below. He's stuck in the structure. Well, if he thought he had to lay up before, now he's really going to have to lay up because there's no way you can get across there. Well, uh, he lays two here as far as we know. We, we missed his drive, but I'm sure he's laying two. And he's just going to have to get himself in position where he can try and get over. But he is not out yet as Bill Sherman is now up, or Bill Sharon is now up. That's right. Now he, in the beginning today, he said he had 18 long holes of golf. He knew the challenge I was playing. Lizzie's laying him. up again. He lays four here and he's laying up again. Uh, yeah, he sure is, Billy. These guys on the lead card, maybe this is the pressure that they're feeling. Well, he does not want to, I don't know his distance, but he does not want to take the chance of bringing that OB and some big strokes. He's only one shot out. I'm going to go ahead and say that this is the first time that they've ever had a gallery of this size watching them play golf. And Billy, I have to be honest, it's not a real big gallery. It's not a gallery you'd expect at a USDGC final card, final day. Well, no, and these are not the big boys. They're not the names that are going to draw, but they still feel the pressure. The media is here. There is a big enough gallery to make them work. And it's a two-man race right now, and that's all he can think about is he's that's worried right. about John Key. This is close, Liz. Oh, he's making his way down, just barely safe there, testing those right edge. All right, John Key, he's going to have a challenging shot. He's got his whole bag next to him. Well, the next two hours on the property will be all about Bill Sharon and John Key as they will battle back and forth one stroke apart now. Well, you know, I hate to say it right now, but these boys are both going to take big numbers on this hole while Kevin Tritton is on that second card trying to make his way up. Well, it, it, lots of holes out here where you can take a big number even with your projected par and you could move back towards the field, so they have got to be careful. And there's a chance that since this is the first time they're in this position, that's all they're thinking about. Well, the projected par for Bill Sharon and John Key on this hole are each a five. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, this hole on regular tournament play par plays as a par four, it so does. they both have an extra stroke to work with. Well, Bill hit the tree off the tee. He laid three, laid up to four. He now lays five, and he's still got to reach the green. John Key, he was in the fixture on two. He's laid up to, for three, so he's two strokes ahead of where Bill is right now, and they're both still having to approach this dangerous green. Well, this is kind of an unusual sight here at the USDGC, at least for the lead card. All these guys are utilizing this bailout zone far to the right. Most guys will lay up uh, and then pitch over. Well, look but... at Bill Sharon. He is in his caddy book, and the caddy books here are extensive, and they're very accurate. He knows his distance. He just wants to know about how far he is away so he can try to make this shot. Shoot, he's walking. He's taking all of his relief off of that OB line. Well, he was just snuggled up close. He lays five, that's his projected par. He really needs to get up and down here because John Key only lays three and John could get a couple more strokes on him. They're both having the same projection on this hole. Well, the pressure is mounting for Bill Sharon at the, every second that passes here for the final round. Right, yeah, and you can see it just mounting right on top of him. He has really become a lot more methodical than he was in the beginning of this match. Oh yeah, I'd say he's almost rigid at this point and Hopefully he can just loosen up and play some golf. Well, that's going to be safe, Liz. Uh, I don't know, Billy. Whew. 
Again, that was extremely close. If he didn't already have pressure, there was a pressure all over that shot. Well, he's got an 18-footer, and it's going to be an uphill putt pretty much. Now let's see if John Key can take advantage and maybe increase his lead here going into the back nine. Oh, that looks a little short, Billy. Oh! Oh, it's yes, he's touching. Hair just the by the rope. hair on his chinny chin chin. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. I mean, when you are tense, it is hard to throw a proper shot. We're going to let him come on down to the green now. This is the lead card, the final round, Saturday afternoon, 2011 USDGC, the performance edition. Well, they're moving in, and John Key is. Uh, He's taking his meter. I don't think he's out, but yeah, Dana's gonna move in. Dana's uh, gonna let him know, you're not out yet, bro. I know you're ready to go. I know you're in the lead, but uh, let's play by the rules, he says. <laughs> yeah, Dana, probably the voice of calm for all of these players on this card. Uh, pa I mean, Patrick May is used to pressure and stress, but uh, I don't know if it's, he's used to USDGC no, pressure. No, let, let me tell you what, he won a national championship. He made the big putt that locked it up, but that had no sense of pressure compared to what he's dealing with today. Well, this is a really tricky shot. This is uh, an elevated basket. It's a man-made elevated basket. Tailwind to boot, Liz. Oh, it's up. It's going to stay right up on the mountain there. Next moving in, I believe uh, John Key is making his way. Dana, Dana gives him the nod. <laughs> Dana gives him the John Key the almost okay. asking permission. Oh, I tell you, a what a great wreck. feeling for Dana right now to be so respected by those members uh, that he's playing with. Well, he's got a great game as well. He's not just a TV and a promoter. I mean, he is just the reason this sport is so cool, Liz. Yeah, John Q probably looking to make this putt. Definitely running it. The wind sets up pretty good for him. Oh, kicks the rope on his backswing, and I don't know if that was enough to uh, Oh, confuse that will him absolutely or... affect your putt. That is part of your follow-through and well, just sort of stabbed at it, but... Like any great golfer, they have to be aware of their situation, and he just didn't calculate that in that time. Well, big putt here for Bill if he can make this. You know, he's uh, he's a couple strokes behind John uh, on the green here, and he's one stroke behind him on the scorecard. Oh, the wind has virtually died down for Bill Sharon. You know, big it putt, usually big happens basket. that way for winners here. Oh, great putt by Bill Sharon. Right. In the Look heart. at him run up there and get that. He's uh, way excited to make that. Well, he was uh, laying five, so that was four or seven. He's going to go two over his projection, so he's going to drop back to eight under par for the event. He's still in second place right now. And we understand Kevin Tritton's lost a stroke on the next hole. He's dropped back to two. That's right, but that still keeps him up on uh, in the top four. So. Dana Vici now. And Dana had some problems off of the tee. He was at on one, out on two, up on three. He lays four here. This is four or five. Dana Vici making it. Oh, wow. He seems that surprised was a that beautiful that fell off. Putt. I, mean, it, I thought it was in for sure, Billy. It must have just been a little bit right and bounced out the side. Well, John Key. A solid putt there. That's right, everybody uh, at this point has little tap outs and that's your lead card action here at the USDGC on Saturday afternoon. That's the end of the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition. John Key, our winner. Now let's get over where Liz Carr was able to run him down after the round. Well, I'm standing next to John Key. He is the winner of this year's United States Disc Golf Championship Performance Edition. John Key, you fired what, 15, 16 under your projected score? I believe so, uh, 78 I think I shot today. Awesome, and now John Key is coming, where are you coming from, John? Dustin, Florida. Florida, all the way from Florida, lots of golf courses in Florida. Do you see elevation changes like this in Florida? No, we don't see elevation changes or yellow rope. <laughs> no yellow rope. So, I, I mean, you just won your first major tournament. You were on the lead card, USDGC. Did you feel any pressure throughout the round, or was it kind of easy sailing? Beginning of the round, looking back at the leaderboard and seeing exactly where anyone was, that was a little nerve-wracking. Um, but then off of uh, hole nine, I almost drained one from about 3, 320 out. 
Wow. It was, that settled me down a little bit. <laughs> well, it takes a 320 foot almost make to just settle this guy down. I tell you what, it looks like you're just moving up in the disc golf world. This is your third tournament? Third PDJ tournament, yes. Third PDJ. Are there any other events? I mean, how, how did you get so good this just being your third tournament? Um, for the past two years, I've been playing in a lot of Southern National tournaments and then throwing as much as I can. All right, well, we hope to see you back out at some PDJ, PDGA events. Is there any shout outs you want to give to anybody back home? Uh, my niece, Sydney, uh, my sisters, and Keychain's Bike and Disc. All right, well, there you have it. John Key, thanks so much for giving us this interview. Thank you. And good luck with your disc golf career. Well, Liz, I can't believe it. I mean, it's already over. The whole week is gone. Monday qualifying, the big banquet, all the red flags. I heard 131 times I waved the red flag today, said one spotter. That's right, and that's just one spotter, Billy. Can you imagine the guys getting discs out of the lake? I heard a guy pulled 200 discs out on one day alone. I mean, that is huge numbers here. But it is something really special happened this week, and a lot of players that will never get a chance to play this course got a chance to come out here and feel like a pro for a whole week. Well, they, they not only got to perform and see how they could do against the big guys, every night we had a wonderful clinic, starting with David Feldberg, Barry Schultz, Ken Climo in the background now, Avery Jenkins teaching them how to throw distance. It has been just a plethora of knowledge all week long. And the vibe has been here because it's been a different vibe. All these players just thoroughly enjoying and, and being able to participate in the things they've seen on the video, the, the stories they've read in the magazines. It has been a special week all around. That's right. You know, they get beat down, but they just keep coming back. It is one of a kind week, and I'm so glad we all got to enjoy it together. Well, it has been a great, great week here at Rock Hill. I want to thank you guys for joining us. I'm Billy Crump. I'm Liz Carr. And he is Boz, and we are Clash DVD. Mm -hmm.